within a single lifetime. We've progressed from the first space rocket launch to using space technologies in our everyday lives. Both governments and private companies have taken up the challenge, launching near-Earth satellites for communication, imaging, and navigation. Low Earth orbit has become another part of the world economy. The International Space Station has been continually inhabited for over 20 years, hosting teams of astronauts who carry out research and trial new robotic technologies. Now we are ready to start a new chapter in the history of human endeavor, to take our first steps towards a permanent off-world presence. Forward to the moon. The moon, our closest neighbor in space, and the perfect training ground for more distant travel. The moon is also an interesting destination in its own right, with ancient geology giving clues to our own planet's history. NASA has sent astronauts here before, but this time it's different. An international effort supported by multiple partnerships with governments and private enterprise, all with a shared vision for the future in space. The NASA program that landed humans on the moon last century was named after the Greek sun god Apollo. NASA's 21st century program to take humans forward to the moon is called Artemis, after the Greek moon goddess, the twin of Apollo. And the Artemis spacecraft is called Orion. Whoever rides Orion to the moon will have a formidable journey ahead. The moon is 384,000 kilometers or 240,000 miles from Earth. It will take the Artemis astronauts about five days to reach it. Every moment trusting their lives to the engineers who designed and built Orion's protective systems. Artemis is not an end in itself, but just the first step towards a sustainable future in space. For this reason, NASA is leading development of an orbiting spaceport called the Gateway. The Gateway provides a rendezvous point for landers, cargo, and supplies needed to support landed operations on the lunar surface. And extra living space for visiting astronauts. Constructed by robotic missions in the years leading up to the astronauts' arrival, it will be used by both crewed and robotic spacecraft. At the same time as the Gateway is being prepared, private companies will be landing a series of NASA science instruments and technologies on the moon. Missions include tests of a LIDAR precision navigation system, technology that could help future craft land safely at a moon base. These new commercial landing systems will also deliver any advanced equipment and supplies that the Artemis astronauts require. Robots will be central to one of the most exciting opportunities the moon offers. A radio telescope able to look back to the very beginnings of our universe. Out there we know our faint radio signals from a fraction of a second after the Big Bang the cosmic microwave background. In addition, hydrogen from the dark ages, before the first stars formed, emit at low radio frequencies. But these are swamped by the constant radio chatter coming from our own planet, as well as by the ionosphere on the Earth's surface. Earth's radio signals spread out through space 
but are blocked by the moon's rocky body, creating a radio shadow. As the moon always keeps this same face turned away from Earth, this creates the only place in the solar system that is consistently shielded from our planet's radio pollution. Initial tests will be carried out on the near side and using a small orbiting telescope named DAPR, which will pass through the moon's radio shadow. Here, in the silence, what secrets might we hear whispered from the universe? A large surface telescope called Farside will only be possible when the gateway enables direct human contact with the far side of the moon. Only then can astronauts telerobotically deploy and maintain such a facility. With everything in place, it will be time to start a new chapter in our history for the Artemis III mission to take humans forward to the moon's surface. We are the Artemis generation.